Hello and welcome to day three of our 30-day journey on healing. I'm Jennifer Deloach and today we're going to learn how to build your believer to receive from God. How to build your believer. First of all, we're actually going to go back on the last two days and recap what the, the foundational truths for this whole 30 days journey that we'll be going on. And as I speak, uh, sh share this and go over this with you and, and know and see that it needs to be established in your heart, your mind, your will, your emotions, in your soul. Okay? It needs to be established as this is for you. Right? It's for you. It's for you. God wants you well. That's one of the first things that we learned on the first day. That God wants you well. And it's also, and I also shared too, and I'll go into it just a little bit, that God sent Jesus to the earth. And Jesus was the very expression of God the Father, showing what His will is. He went about doing good, and He healed. He turned no one away. He turned no one away. And He doesn't turn anyone way, away today. He does not do that. God is the same yesterday and forever. So it's very important that we establish the amazing truth that God wants you well and that we receive that for ourselves. So the next thing that we talked about was that God is no respecter of persons. To be a respecter of persons, Roman tells us, is sin. And so that is found, actually, Acts. Acts 10:34. God is no respecter of persons. What is available for one is available for all. And then we learn the promises of God are yes and amen. Some have said that maybe it's not God's will to heal me. I may have done this or that or, you know, I just don't see that God would heal me. But see, God's promises are, He's no respecter of persons. And God's promises are yes and amen. It doesn't say yes, no, and maybe. It says yes and amen. So His promises for help and healing and prosperity and an abundant life is for you. For you. Okay? So, in 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says, The promises of God in Him are yes and in Him, Amen. And unto the glory of God by us. We get to actually complete that life cycle of healing. Or that life cycle of receiving the promise of God. Whatever it is. There's a, I forgot, there's hundreds of promises in the Bible for us. And His Word is truth. It is life. It will never fail you. Never. It will always support you. So we also learned we have already been healed. And what does that mean? We've already been healed. 1 Peter 2.24 says that we have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Have been. So if we have been, why are people sick and in pain today? Why is that? And, what I, and I went in more detail, you know, in the previous videos. But understand this, that God says in His Word, My people perish for a lack of knowledge. My people. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. So it's really getting to know God, getting to know Him as He really is, taking on truths out of the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit revealing to us these truths, and that we see, wow, it's, it is for me. And you position yourself to receive from God. In these 30 days, I'm going to show you how to position yourself to receive from God. <clears throat> and we also learned that the traditions of man will make God's Word not work for you. So that's another reason why that people are sick today and when God's already provided healing, 
but they don't know how to receive it or that, that what they have learned is diluted with traditions of men. It's, it's, it's adulterated and it's not bringing 100% of God's Word into our lives and that work for us. The traditions of man make God's Word not work for us. One of them is what I just said. Sometimes God will, sometimes He won't. But God's Word says He will. It's yes. Yes. Every time, it's yes. If you come to Him, yes. <laughs> if you come to Him for healing, yes. And it's just you receiving it. And for whatever it is, for whatever it is that you're believing God for, His promises are yes and amen. But if we believe a lie, if we believe experiences that we've had in the past or that someone else has had in the past and they didn't get healed or they didn't get their, the promise of God in their lives, see, we cannot be moved by that because we don't know their relationship with God. Though we see them do amazing things and I am not belittling what they have done. I'm just saying that in L, you know, none of us know everything. There's areas that I'm perished in and areas that you are perishing in. But as we grow in the Word of God, that will become less and less. And we become more higher and develop in God and in coming into ways of living in the abundant life. To redeem the, the redeemed life. And the wages and that and first that was first Peter two twenty four. We have already been healed. And the traditions of man will not make God's word work for you. I did not write that scripture reference down, but I'll have it for you tomorrow. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans six twenty three. And it's Jesus came and paid our debt. The wages of sin is death. And so when he came, he took all of sin of mankind, sicknesses, diseases, and pains, regrets, transgressions, iniquities, all of it. He took it on the cross. I'm letting that sink in because that is so powerful. And he became sin on that cross. He became it. And that then he died. And before he died, he said, it is finished. And he died. He went to hell for two days, three, yeah, three days, excuse me, Acts 2 tells us. He went to hell for three days, and he rose from the grave, and he brought us up with him to a higher level of authority, that which Satan had stolen from Adam and Eve. Jesus brought it back to us, and now it's just learning how to walk in our authority, how to walk in the redeemed life, and that comes by spending time with God positioning ourselves to receive from Him. And so spiritually speaking, Jesus did a complete work. There's nothing else that He needs to do for our healing. His blood was shed and it is enough. It is enough. It is finished. And then He sent the Holy Spirit when He, went, when he rose from the grave and sits at the right hand of the Father. He sent the Holy Spirit to us to reveal to us what He has already provided. Spiritually speaking, now that was one of the things that we learned too, was that we, we realize who we truly are. We're not this body that you see. You don't see the real me. You don't see the real me. You see my body. The real me is inside. And that I am a spirit be being and so are you. We're spirit beings that live in a body. We're spirit beings that have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and we live in this body. And so spiritually speaking, when we say, Jesus, take my life and do something with it, we became a new creation, a new spirit being that never before existed. And it, we became the vessels that with, of the living God living inside of us. The kingdom of God is inside of us. He deposited everything we would ever need in this world inside of us. And it's learning how to get it into our soul, our mind, will, and emotions. And Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to help us with that. And He sent us His Word. And so, 
I'm going to let that sink in a few minutes because I remember when I didn't know that I was a spirit being. I was like, what? <laughs> I believe this was me, you know. But we are. We're spirit beings. We have a soul. And we live in a body. In this body. And, and our body, this is our earth suit. Without it, we would not be here. We would be in, in heaven. Right? So, waiting upon the Lord, that's another thing that we want, talked about, and we're going more into it today, because it's in that waiting time with the Lord that we build up our believer. Now, the waiting time we discussed is not like waiting in a cashier line, just being patient. Although we be patient, but it's not that kind of patient, I will explain. Whenever we're waiting upon the Lord, it says we will renew our strength. We will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. That's Isaiah 40, 31. 40, 31. And how we, how we wait matters. Because how we wait will determine if we receive uh, from God. It will determine if we get in that position to receive from God. Now, what is God doing? Is He holding back on us because you're going to wait till you get in the right position before I give it to you? No. God is a good God. He's not holding back. But we have to come in alignment so that it things can get in the way. There's things that stop us. There's obstacles. There's offenses. There's unforgiveness. There's all kinds of things that get in the way that stop the blessings of God. It's not that God stopped it. But it's that the enemy, the devil, has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does it through so many different ways. Okay? I mean, it is amazing. And I will go over this and share this with you. I was um, living in Hilton Head, South Carolina. And I was on my way to Savannah, Georgia. I saw a caravan of equipment and trucks and vehicles. I saw caravans of it. Before it, they were in the process of rebuilding, resurfacing the road. I was amazed because usually you would see people on the sidelines. There would be flags. They would stop you, you know, from going a certain ways so that uh, a two lane, you know, that we have to use it as a one lane and take turns. This did not happen. This was amazing what I saw. <clears throat> I saw... The road needed resurfacing on that lane as they come, okay, as they're coming. The first one was, it was doing what it needed to do to get the next truck and the next vehicle to be able to do its part. And there was about five or six, maybe more, um, vehicles that were doing this. They were, they were together. They were a team, and they were repaving, resurfacing the road, and... The, the thing about it, as I went my way, they were coming this way. It was, it was not like they were real slow. They was getting it done, and, and I was amazed at it. And I saw that as they went by, and you're wondering what this has to do with the fences, but oh, it's amazing what the Lord showed me here. As they went by, the truck, or the vehicle, it was a truck with all kind of equipment on it, and it was doing its work as it went by. The next one had the next stage and it was doing its work. And the next one and the next one. And at the end of the caravan, they were painting the road. And it must have been some quick dry stuff because there were vehicles like vans, trucks, and cars, you know, whatever, was behind them. They didn't have to have people on the side of the road with the, the flags. That really amazed me because I've never seen it before and I've never seen it since. And what I have heard, what, and as I was going by, the Lord ministered to me and He said this, When you are offended, you pave a road for the devil to go to and fro as he pleases. I'm going to say it again. When you are offended, and it doesn't matter who's at fault, if you are offended, it paves a road for the devil to go to and fro as he pleases. So see, there's things that can stop the blessings of God, and it's not God stopping it. 
It's the devil. It's the enemy. It's our actions. It's things that we do sometimes that stops that flow. Stops that flow of the blessings. And so, I mean, you know, I didn't know so many things about what I did, what I've done, that could stop the blessings of God. But as we grow in God, we learn. And we praise God for His mercy and His grace because we still see His goodness in our lives. When we look, we still see His goodness. But for us to walk in the quality of life that He has prepared for us, we are to grow and take action with what we've learned. We can no longer just sit on the sidelines and just let life pass us by. We take action and go forward and come up higher in that, in that lifestyle that He's showing us in His Word. Okay? So, and we'll go more on that on, on a few more days. <laughs> but I felt like I was to say it today. So, you know. So, we were at the waiting on the Lord. So, in this waiting time, in Isaiah uh, 55, 1, I was reading the Amplified Version and uh, Isaiah 40 in verse 31. We're talking about waiting upon the Lord. The Lord showed me that to wait is not to sit here just like you're waiting at a red light or sit, you know, sitting at the bank ready for your name to be called to go and do whatever you wanted to do or at going to for a physical and you're waiting for your name to be called to go back for your physical. You know, whatever it is, any areas that you're waiting, red light, waiting for the train to go by, you know, different things. It's, it's not like that. But yet, there's something you can do in those wait times. I'll share that with you in just a moment. But waiting upon the Lord means to create. While you wait, you create. While you wait, you create. And here's how the Lord said it to me. To wait is to create an atmosphere that positions you to receive from God. So we're responsible in our, see, we have a part in our receiving healing. God just don't put it on you like that. It's that we, we receive it. And it's as simple as whenever you said, Jesus, take my life, do something with it. And you are a new creation. You, the, the old man was gone and you are a new creation in the Lord Jesus Christ. But you still have old man ways about it. Still have those old man ways about it. About your soul, not your spirit. Let me say that again. Your soul has old man ways about it. That needs to be renewed. Your mind needs to be renewed to the Word of God. Because see, we, you know, it's like going to another country. See, we were... We were translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. And there are spiritual laws that we are to learn. And it doesn't have to be difficult. It's, and, uh, but it's just like going to another nation. And you go there. And there's certain things you can do. And there's certain things you cannot do. Okay? It's just like that. And so we go to the Word of God and find out what it is that we're to do to live the abundant life that Jesus talks about. And to live as the redeemed, as Jesus talked about. That's what He brought us. To learn how to live that way. And so, this waiting, you create an atmosphere that positions you to receive from God. And we also talked about... And let me read my notes just here for a moment. And it's in Isaiah 40, 31, waiting on the Lord. But read verses 28 through 31. In fact, we could do that right now. Let's do that right now. Isaiah 40. Okay. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint or grow weary. <clears throat> there is no searching of his understanding. It's so amazing. There's no way you can learn all of God because he, he just keeps going. He gives power to the faint and weary. And to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. Isn't that wonderful? Even you shall faint and be weary. 
and young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But those who wait upon the Lord, who expect and look for and hope in Him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. See, that's amazing. It's verses 28 through 31, chapter 40 of Isaiah. <clears throat> and we also talked about how you wait matters. Because what you do in your wait time determines the results. Okay? So, what results do you want? And renewing your mind to these truths becomes single-minded with those truths. You, you let go of the tainted truths. You know, those uh, religious lies that make God's Word not work, or the traditions of man that make God's Word not work, or the opinions of man. You know, it may be even experiences that you've had in the past and God didn't heal you, you said. You better see what it was. And I've been guilty of saying that God didn't heal me on this and that, you know, in the past. But what I've come to realize was that I was not in position. I did not position myself because it was right there. Right here, I just needed to position myself to receive it. That's the way God is. He's already provided it. It's just us coming and getting it. And, um, and so, and then allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us God's Word. So those were the things we talked about for the last two days. And so now I want to share with you about build your believer. It's important that we have a firm foundation of the Word of God. The foundation of God's Word it is truths that are alive and it's working in you. Truths that will not let you down. It's a foundation that will not crack. It will stay firm and solid. And so one of the things that we have to do is change the way we think. And we detox our stinking thinking, right? We got to get rid of it. And uh, Proverbs 23, 7 says, again, that's Proverbs 23, 7 as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, what do you think about God's health? I mean, excuse me. What do you think about you receiving your healing? What do you think about that? See, that lets you know if you need to just tweak it a little bit and receive. And so, as a man thinks within himself, so is he. So, our thoughts matter. So one thing that we want to do is like stop feeding the toxic thoughts with our attention. And the Bible tells us in Timothy to give attention to reading the Word of God. Give attention to it because it will set you free. Whenever you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Make you free. See? And so stop feeding the toxic thinking with your attention. Because what you give your attention to, you cause it to grow and develop. And it becomes a stronghold. And so there may be some strongholds that we need to let go of that we didn't realize that we have. And everybody has strongholds. And anytime I say something that you believed in, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel belittled. I'm not doing that. I'm sharing with you some tactics that the enemy has used to keep you in defeat, to keep you in sickness, to keep you in poverty, to keep you in fear. Whatever it is that you're going through, and so I'm sharing truths with you because those truths will make you free. It'll make you free. So, um, so when, what we give attention to, we cause it to grow and become a stronghold in our life, either for good or either for bad. So we're going to build an amazing foundation here. And this is important. And what you give your attention to, you grow that. So give attention to God's Word. Give attention to His truths. Okay? And be careful what you listen to. Um, this is something the Lord shared with me. We'll go more on it on another day. But your attention is the currency of life. Your attention. What you give your attention to has brought to you what you have today. What you give your attention to is a currency. Your, your attention is a currency of life. And what you pay attention to, you purchase it into your life. So that's why it's important to guard your eye gates, your ear gates, your heart gates. 
and not just let anything or any thought come to you. Just because a thought comes to your mind doesn't mean it's yours unless you entertain it, unless you take it and start thinking on it. And you can say, I cast that thought away. That's unacceptable. I'll not have it. If it's not good for you, don't receive it, right? And so today we're going to read Luke 6, 46 through 49. And this is powerful because we're talking about foundations of God's Word. And the last two days we have been, uh, we are, have been building. And today I wanted you to see it as that. And what you're doing is you're building your believer to believe. And you're building the foundation on God's Word, which will never crack. It will never fail. No matter what comes or goes, it is still there. It will never leave you nor forsake you. It is alive and active and eager to do that constant work in you. Amen. So, let's go to Luke 6.46 and we'll read through 49. It says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? And see, some of us, and I'm included, we have done things we didn't realize we were being disobedient. We have done things thinking we was right on and we was right off. <laughs> and that comes by us understanding the Word of God and allowing God to reveal His truth to us. And, you know, it's so important that we go to hearing the word from uncompromised preaching and teaching because that's what's going to help you to go forward but there are no perfect churches they are no perfect people they are no perfect preachers there are no perfect teachers there are no perfect anything or anybody and so it's like that's why it's important that we go before God and we take the responsibility that we walk what we learn in God's Word, okay? So, going back, why, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? For everyone who comes to me and listens to my words, everyone who comes to me and listens to my words, in order to heed their teachings and does them, I will show you what he's like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep. <coughs> and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. That's why we want to, to build our believer upon the solid foundation of God's Word. Because then no matter what comes, your faith will not be shaken. Amen? Now let's go to verse 49. But he that heareth and does not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So, what we're learning in our journey together, I am encouraging you in the Word of God. Because I know God's Word works, it's alive, it's fully alive, and it's eager to do and fulfill its assignment in your life. In you, to you, and for you. And you can share it with others, and it goes and flows to others, right? So God's Word is alive, and it's active. Remember that. God and His Word is one, and it will never, ever fail you. If there is a failure, then... Check up and examine and see why. And, and learn from that. Don't get, don't get upset with yourself because, oh, I didn't get it. It's okay. It's perfectly okay. We can learn from our mistakes. And when we've missed it and we believe something that, uh, that we thought was truth and we realized they weren't, you know, we forgive that whomever gave us those truths. We forgive that. We forgive ourselves. And we just go forward. No resentment, no offense, we go forward. And there's so many wonderful things I will be sharing with you in these 30 days. I'm excited about it. <laughs> and so let's, um, let's go ahead and close this. I want you to see how important it is to have a firm foundation and that it be solid. It be the solid Word of God. 
that's what will support you. God's word is truth and it will never fail you. And, and like I said, if it's not working, examine and see if it's tainted. Maybe it's tainted with thoughts of, you know, um, I don't know. Is this truth? You're just not single-minded yet. Just stay in His presence and let it come single-minded. Where there is that, none of that, oh, it is for me. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And you get in the Word and you see, it's for me. It's for me. And I don't know if any, if y'all seen the um, video that I told you about yesterday on YouTube that's available. Lachey McKinney. Lachey McKinney. M-C-K-I-N-N-E-Y testimony it actually goes through what I'm sharing with you today it, it, it's the compound effect of the Word of God and it's amazing so I, I encourage you to watch that again it's Lachey McKinney I'm not affiliated with her ministry or, or the videos or anything it's just uh, when I watched it it was like this is what I'm talking about this is a beautiful perfect example of how God's Word will bring you up and out of any situation that you're in okay so ask the Holy Spirit who is always with you he's right there and he'll reveal the truth to you so let's go now to John 8 31 John 8 31 and 32 John 8 31 and 32 and then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Now listen, this is good advice for us. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. What does that mean, disciples? It means you become the disciplined ones. Disciplined by the word of God. Amen. So, and then verse 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free see when you're disciplined by the Word of God you get to experience the results of that praise God so build your believer spend that quality time with God create that atmosphere that positions you to receive from God and we talked about the atmosphere I believe it was yesterday's video so be sure to watch that please hit the subscribe button the like button and that alarm to let you know when more videos are coming up so you do not miss any days on this journey. I'm so glad we're doing this journey together. And remember, God wants you well. Bye-bye. Have an amazing day. Enjoy the journey of healing. Bye-bye.